Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coast Star, the official newspaper of the Borough of Belmar, and the Asbury Park Press on December 22, 2021. A notice of this meeting was posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building. A roll call, uh, Councilman Brennan? Here. Council McKinney? Here. Mayor Walsper? Here. Uh, Councilman Carvelli and Councilman McCracken are absent. Everybody can rise and join me in saluting the flag of our great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody can just remain standing for a moment of silence for our troops, their families, and all of our first responders. Thank you. Um, the only thing I'm on, on workshop, um, and I don't know if you want to discuss this, Chief, or not. Um, there has been a big change uh, with the Supreme Court uh, on, on uh, firearms and the carrying of firearms. And we're, we're talking about, what we're looking at putting an ordinance in place to uh, prevent it indefinitely in certain areas. Um, we, we don't know the whole extent of it, but maybe, Chief, if you could. Uh, Give us a little bit of an overview. Mm -hmm. So this past week, uh, I met with Patrick uh, along with Captain Kimball and uh, Detective Borman in reference to the carry permits. Uh, so right now, you can apply for a carry permit. Um, we do the background investigation, and then it goes out to the Superior Court, and they'll approve or deny the carry permit. Um, what we're trying to do is get a little ahead of it for, for next summer and that is have areas in town where there'll be a no gun zone, such as uh, restaurants that serve alcohol, um, parks, recreation areas, and stuff like that, so we can have more, a little, a little bit more of control on you know, what's out there and you know, what, what we're walking into. So um, we were uh, working with uh, the, the Burr attorney um, to come up with uh, you know, ordinances that we can put in place for next, next year or as soon as possible so that we have them in place. Yes, and we want to make sure we're legal with everything. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking into that. And uh, Patrick, you'll be looking into making sure that whatever we put in place uh, uh, actually pertains to what the law actually is now, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there, there are some certain works um, in place right now in the state legislature. Um, and they are planning on imposing certain additional restrictions for where you can and can't carry. But because there's nothing in place, we're just trying to be a little uh, preemptive here and just make sure that we're not violating anybody's Second Amendment, Second Amendment right to carry while also maintaining the, uh, the safety of the uh, residents of Belmar. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll be looking into that. Um, you know, we're going to do a lot of research to make sure that we're right uh, before we bring any ordinances or anything for us to take a look at. So, but I just wanted to bring it up because it is, uh, I know it's in the news lately that the, the, uh, the state legislature is trying to put something into place and, and uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're covered in Belmar. So, all right, that's all I have. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean the beach. Yeah. Is that a place we could be looking at making a gun-free zone? I think that comes into recreation, wouldn't it? We're certainly looking at it. Again, we can't be overly restrictive, but mm -hmm. we are looking at all the avenues. It's something new because New Jersey's been so restrictive for so long. Right. And now with the recent United States Supreme Court decision removing the prohibition for New Jersey or the enhanced requirement, uh, we're kind of starting from scratch without any, without any guidance. So we're, we're looking at other avenues, other states, and how they've all handled it, mm -hmm. which being permissible under the Second Amendment. Well, I, I can't tell you how happy I am to hear that we're going to get ahead. I thought we were going to have to wait and see what Trenton would do and then see what would happen in court. But, you know, we might as well move ahead ourselves. I think that's definitely the right thing to do. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll move to agree with that. I mean, uh, whatever we can put in place to uh, make sure that our residents are fully safe and uh, we don't have any, uh, any complications with the law. So we'll be, we'll be discussing it. Chief will be discussing it with the attorney and coming up with the best possible scenario to uh, present to us. Okay. All right. Anybody else got anything? No. All right. So uh, we'll move on. We're going to uh, table the approval of 
recommends because uh, two councilmen were two council persons <laughs> weren't here. <laughs> so, I think mean, only would be able to vote on the minutes, but uh, so we'll we'll do that next meeting. Uh, reports of council, Councilman Gray. Thank you. Do we have any petitions? No, we do not. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's right. That's all right. Government basis. Yes, I had actually had a, a full week last week. Um, the Harbor Commission met on Tuesday. Thanks to the money that the Borough Council made available, JK and L docks are having their electric replaced. They're in dire need. Um, we're looking into the possibility of dredging. We definitely need to dredge, uh, but we're looking to see if there's a way we can piggyback somehow. The mayor is looking into joining forces with the other towns around the bay and see if they would be willing to go in on a project to actually dredge the entire Shark River area. When the state dredged, they only dredged the channel, and everybody who uses the river knows that we need to dredge so much more than that. And if there's a dredge up here, well, we can piggyback with a seasonal license for dredging our marina and not have to pay to get the dredge all the way up here because it all, it's, a, it's just a way to do it cheaper. It's absolutely, it's definitely the cheapest way to do it. And I'm really hoping that works out. Tourism uh, had a meeting scheduled for Wednesday, but there was no quorum, so we did have a discussion. The mayor and the business administrator were there, uh, kicked around some really good ideas. Uh, we're looking to see if the businesses along Main Street would be willing to decorate uh, for the holidays uh, with the idea that if, if there's enough participation, next year we could actually have maybe a holiday decorating contest like we have for the homes. We have, you know, houses decorated for the holidays, maybe we can get the businesses in on that too. Um, and another great idea that was kicked around is uh, during the summer, if you have your wristband or your season beach badge, there's a way to go to businesses um, who would be willing to offer you special deals since you're a, you know, a, a patron of our beach, I guess you'd say. Um, and we, you know, the idea would be to, there's a lot of ways to incorporate the information. One of the things about the technology we have available now is that if, if we can set up with the badge and the wristband people, you know, once you get your wristband on your phone, you'll see, oh, look, look at this QR code or, you know, go through this list and these are the places you can get a discount, um, things like that. So those are some really good ideas and I'm really looking forward to seeing the Tourism Commission and the PVP can work together to see if those things can go. The Environmental Commission had a meeting on Thursday and they had a quorum and they actually had pretty much everybody there. And uh, they're still looking at the leaf blower issue. They really want to see if there's a way they can build public support for doing something about the leaf blowers and all the, you know, particularly the leaf blowers. They're the ones that are the most damaging to human hearing. They make the most noise. Uh, those two stroke engines are the most polluting kind of gas powered engine you have so they're looking to see what they can do with that and they're also one of the things that's happened um, as far as recycling since there before they got rid of the plastic bags in the supermarkets that was where you could take all your plastic film they had they would have receptacles by the doors to bring back your bags but you could also bring back you know the plastic film that's around your cases of water um, and you know, any kind of thing that's wrapped, but even the plastic, I just bought a mattress. The plastic film that's wrapped around those mattresses is totally recyclable. And the companies that use it are the companies like Trex and TipperTech who make composite lumber because that's the plastic they use, not bottles or anything else. They use plastic film. But, I mean, if you Google now, like where's the closest place to recycle plastic film, they'll tell you go to the supermarkets, they stopped doing it. There's, there's no place. I have bags and bags of, of film like piling up. So uh, Ed Livingkind, who's the chair of the Environmental Commission, is going to call John Weber, who's on the uh, Bradley Beach Borough Council, because they had a pilot project last year where they were collecting. Uh, I talked to him and tried to see if we could piggyback, but that was a no-go. I figure since Ed and John are both surfers, maybe they'll be a little bit more copacetic. And he's going to call and see if there's any way we can find out anything about how we could start to, um, you know, recycle plastic film. You know, there's not as many bags around, but there's so much of that plastic stuff that really needs to be recycled. It's everywhere if you think about it. And, uh, you know, we are doing so good now that we have massive for our recycling, and everybody's really recycling so much. 
And I just think this is a, this is a missing piece for our recycling puzzle. We need to take, take care of that. Tom, does uh, MAZA not ban film? No, they do not. When we took the tour, the pr pr problem for MAZA is they need so much bulk. They need they, they gave us like a pound figure, and they just and they basically said, see that little room over there with the twenty foot high ceiling? We would have to fill that room with film, and we're just not going to do that. It's just to them, it's not profitable. It's not profitable. You need to make a, from what I understand, you need to make a direct connection with the companies that want that film, which is those composite timber companies. So we'll see what happens. And that's my report. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. My oldest son got married. meetings too. I was with the ADA um, committee and we talked about how over the summer they were very impressed with how much better the parking for handicapped parking was in town. So apparently there was a lot of uh, the areas are much improved along the beach and along some of the paid areas. So they were happy with the increased number of parking spots for handicapped. And the resource guide, the manual for handicapped families, families with special needs, that is going to be updated. They are still working on that. I needed updated like addresses and phone numbers and things like that. So they're still working on trying to update, update that, but there still is a manual at the entrance to the library and I believe at the entrance to Borough Hall. So if any families, special needs or handicapped families need that resource guide, that is still available for them. That was the ADA meeting. Recreation, uh, trunk or treat in the borough was scheduled for Friday, October 28th. Danny White's kids band, which is my son's band, so I'm partial to this, will start playing between 4.15 and 4.30. And uh, the, mu the Old Beach Music Rock Band will be playing. Registration for your costume contest will start at 4.30 and at 5.30. Judging will start at 5.30. Everything's gonna be done outside. The judging for the costumes will be inside unless it rains and then everything will be outside. But otherwise it's gonna be right here along the Trumper Street, it'll be right outside along six. Chair yoga, mat yoga, and all around senior fitness happening in the uh, Taylor Pavilion every Thursday. They're going great. Chair yoga is 9.30 to 10.30. Mat yoga is 11.30 to 12.30. All around senior fitness, 12.45 to 1.45. $5 per class. Friday Open Gym started a couple weeks ago. That's for the grade four through eighth graders, Friday afternoons from three to 4.30. And the Belmar Youth Club signups started October 1st. The program will start November 12th. And that's gonna be from grades three through uh, 10th. Grades three and five will be four to 5.30. Grades six to seven from, six to eight from six to 7.30. And nine through 10th grade will meet from eight to 9.30. They must be in Belmar or Lake Como resident for youth club. Basketball signups have started. You can find all the information about basketball signups on the website. And then senior game day has been a big hit, big turnout up at the at Taylor Pavilion too. And that's Mondays from 12.30 to 3 p.m. And then a few things around the schools. Belmar Elementary School this past Saturday did a school sponsored team uh, walkathon in Ocean Grove to uh, benefit Mary's Place by the Sea in honor of one of their teachers who just completed breast cancer treatment. And on Friday, the students and the staff all wore pink in support of this teacher. And the teachers in Belmar Elementary have been taking advantage of our small walkable town and have scheduled walking class trips to the police station, the library, beach music studios, Taylor Hardware, Sweet Teas, and the post office. And that's been a good way for them to do fun outdoor class trips for the kids. St. Rose Grammar School is doing their trick or treat this Friday. You can still make a candy donation. It's from 6.30 to 8. Parent-teacher conferences are next week, and picture day for St. Rose Grammar School kids is November 3rd. And St. Rose High School has their open house for eighth graders or anybody who wants to go to St. Rose High School tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. The high school staff and students are doing their walkathon tomorrow also. So if you see them walking around town or up on the boardwalk, they're doing a walkathon. And that's going to raise equipment for their uh, new classroom equipment. The St. Rose High School placement test for eighth graders is November 5th at 8 a.m. And if you are a public school kid and you want to be a freshman for the day at St. Rose High School, you can do that 
on November 10th, and registration is required right now. And that is my report. Thank you. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have that much, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, is that uh, we're getting ready, the DPW is getting ready to place the fountain on uh, uh, Ninth Avenue, and we're excited about getting that in place. Uh, uh, Councilman Brown went over everything that, that is happening in the marina. The only thing I wanted to add to that is we knew we have a new vote in the marina that is uh, because of the whale watching is getting so popular that uh, a new vote has shown up in our marina and is going to be renting a slip for. Uh, the remainder of this year and hopefully years to come uh, and it's going to be pretty much strictly for the whale watching so uh, you know it's uh, exciting that, that that we have that those those type of programs running on the marina and uh, and, uh, and of course um, we always like to see another slip filled up so that, that helps us out with, with all the upgrades we need in the marina so but uh, other than that, everybody have a nice Halloween. Hopefully the kids are out there safe. Uh, I know we have a resolution on tonight for our, our curfew, but uh, that goes into place because we wanna make sure that everybody is safe for the, ho the Halloween holiday. And that's all I have. So we'll move on to uh, public session on any of the resolution items. If anyone would like to speak about a resolution on the agenda, please step forward, state your name and address. Yes, Mr. Kramer. All right, <clears throat> Eugene Kramer, 4th Avenue. Um, I guess I want to ask a question about uh, this uh, resolution, uh, Third Amendment uh, uh, to Verizon. Uh, Verizon has a, a lease with uh, cellular equipment uh, attached to the building up on the roof. And I, I think it's that corner of the building over there. Uh, uh, I think it's on this building here, correct? It is. Yeah. It's this building. We're, we're increasing the, I think the lease was up and we're increasing the prices. I mean, all their equipment is up there. We're, we're just increasing the price uh, that they have to pay us uh, to continue, continue service there. So I think that's right. And they're, they're adding some additional equipment. So, and yeah, <coughs> and we're charging more for that. Right. right. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Rent's going up and I think that's fine. Uh, it's just that there was, I think it was with the second amendment uh, to the same agreement, uh, there was, uh, Verizon had the option of uh, either using the borough's electricity in the building here or going directly to a Jersey Central Power and Light Company and having a meter installed. Um, I, I just, I can't tell from the outside of the building. Was that ever done, or are they using uh, the borough's electricity to run their equipment? I can't answer that. Hey, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to get back to you on that, Mr. Graham, because I'm not actually sure on whose elect electric they're using. If they, if they have their own meter there, or they're connected in with the borough. So we'll, we'll, I'll have to get the business administrator to uh, research that and give you a call. Yeah, you can hold it till next meeting. I, I have no objection to this to this agreement here. Uh, it, it's just that uh, uh, there's a second question there uh, about if they are using uh, the uh, borough's electricity. Uh, number one, they're supposed to pay for it. Uh, number two, uh, are they hooked up? to our emergency generator that the uh, police department uses. Um, I know, uh, Mayor, you had questions uh, when Verizon was, was here and talking about, <coughs> about cellular, and uh, uh, they weren't proposing any uh, backup generators so that our phones would work when the electricity wasn't. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious here now, especially with what happened over at uh, at the senior building. We're apparent. This building apparently is, and the police department is apparently on the same circuit as the the uh, uh, senior building. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if we lose uh, electricity all the way around, uh, you know, even the people in the senior building may not be able to call over here to tell them that they have a problem. I'm just curious as to whether, uh, number one, 
they're purchasing the electricity from the borough. And number two, if they are purchase, purchasing the electricity from the borough, um, are they on a circuit here that is backed up by the uh, borough's emergency generator? Actually, I think it would be an enhancement to their operation if it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I do see on the original plans, um, they were going to uh, put an emergency generator uh, hookup on the outside of the building. I think it was supposed to be in this corner over here by where the uh, gas supply comes into the building. But uh, I parked over there tonight and I did not see that, uh, that, that hookup or plug it for an emergency generator. Those are two great questions that I'm about to find out the answer for you because I, I, you know, I can't uh, say either way and I don't know. So we'll, we'll find out that all those two questions for you by the next meeting. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> I was gonna say, uh, I know it was a question before about them installing uh, their 5G equipment and perhaps if you know, electricity goes out, are we gonna lose everything at that point? Um, you know, and I'm just curious, uh, with the emergency generator that's outside the building here, does it service the entire building? In other words, if we lose JCP and L power, do the lights come on and come on in here? Well, the, there is some power that comes over here, but it's mostly all for the police department. Yeah. Make sure that the, the, the 911 system and everything like that stays operational and everything over the police department. There, there is still some, some things that happen with the generator over here, but uh, it's mainly for the police department. I've known that because uh, of my employment here for 25 years. So when we lost power, <laughs> it was mostly for the police department. Uh, yeah, when we lost power, when, when the senior building lost power, was that for like three or four hours? Uh, you know, I, I know they, they had trouble over there for 20 plus hours. Right. But uh, uh, how much time? Uh, yeah, it was only a couple, it was only a couple hours. And the problem is when it came back on, the biggest problem was it burned out those switches on the elevator and uh, that, that, was, that was the issue. So, but I know, uh, I know their board is definitely working on it. Uh, we have called Chris Smith's office to get extra funding, to try to get all that stuff straightened out. So uh, I know uh, our business administrator and their board over there is working on all that. So hopefully before anything like that happens again, we can get it all resolved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on consent agenda number one? Motion. Second. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Walsper? Yes. Uh, next, can I have a motion to approve the resolutions listed on consent agenda number two? Make the motion. Second. Uh, Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Walsper? Yes. Councilman Brennan of Saints. Uh, last item we have is second reading and public hearing of ordinance 2022-14. This is an ordinance amending chapter 40, development regulations, section two and section nine. This was, we had introduced it and then made revisions after the planning board reviewed it. Uh, they reviewed the ordinance last night and we're happy that the mayor and council made the changes that they requested. This is open for public comment if anyone would like to speak on it. Okay, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2022-14? Motion. I'll second. I think this is a great, a great new yeah, ordinance. Yeah. I think this is great. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Council McKinney? Yes. Mayor Walsberg? Yes. Okay. That's it. Good job. Okay. On the public session. Anybody have any questions for the public? Mm -hmm. From the public? Yes. Yes, Claire. to be Yankee Distillery. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I will take all that soft uh, that film plastic you're talking about off your hands. I'd be happy to. And I sent you a text. Um, our niece has been collecting the plastic for probably about five, six months now. Oh. Um, and they, you drop it off at Wegmans, you back it up, <coughs> go a little scale, weigh it out, 
sent her the information. They record it every six months. Trex will build them if they um, oh, it's collect the bench them. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five hundred pounds, and they'll build them a bench. So if they got one, and they got another one. They're hoping it all until the six months is up, and they can build it out. Oh, so this is so good. Okay, so I, I pardon me for being naive about the film, because I thought I could just throw that in with my recycling. So I did not know that. Yeah. What other film products will they take besides the plastic wrap and the like anything soft ish? Any, anything that's like a film of plastic wrapped around as long as it's clean. Like you like you, you know, bags with fertilizer and you know, potting soil and stuff. Yeah. That's the same kind of plastic but it's dirty. Uh. So that you gotta kinda have to throw away unless you really want to clean it. But anything else that's like yeah. that. Like the wrapped toilet paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bag of frozen Absolutely. vegetables. Right? <coughs> oh, frozen vegetables. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You, you yep. cannot imagine yep. how much. Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's amazing how much you can There's collect. There's so much of it. People yeah. just don't even think about well, it. Well, yeah. that's really good. We should make people aware of that because that is a really great idea. Yeah. yeah. And do, and they'll donate. And where should we bring them from? Um, we drop them off at Whiteman's. So we can drop them off at Reg Regmans, or Regmans and there's a bin that, that says it. I mean, we, we have this huge garbage bag and then we just leave it on the side because you can't fit it into a can. We just yeah. leave it on the side, our niece records it, sends it in and everything. And um, Stop and Shop was another place and Kohl's. We, have, we only go to Wegmans because we go to Costco. There you go. So, right. And it's all right there. So it, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable how much you can actually collect. So and I sent you a text on that. Thank you. That, that was one of the things that the Environmental Commission talked about was that it had this, but you know, it was, I really appreciate they're gonna help me out. Well, we kind of need a town wide solution unless yes. we could come up with a thing where, you know, there's a receptacles. way to get receptacles that we can take. They'll give them to you. They, they have, like, just really? look, look up the program. That All right, I, I gotta check that out. Thank you. you. Yeah, you get put, put the things you. around and you just got to make sure you get the right stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So we can put one here for a hole, we can put one on a... Uh, okay, now you're talking. Yeah. Now you're but talking. until you get this all set up, I'd be happy to take anything off your hands. Well, I will definitely start talking about it. Great. Yeah, it, great. I mean, it, it really is. It's, 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 it's unbelievable how much... That's great. Um, I mean, we went to Costco. All the stuff that they had. Yes, everything. We walked out with shopping carts full of it. I said, can I have that? And why do you want it? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't have to tell the 14th annual. First, I want to say thank you for allowing us to have our Belmar Cares concert at the Taylor Pavilion. It was one of the most profitable donations we've had in probably six years, seven years. Yeah, so we're great. going to be able to help multiple women that are going through breast cancer. And uh, like I had announced that night, the, in the year 2000 and the year 2018, those two in particular mammograms that I had were the two that actually absolutely saved my life. So that's, we just can't stress enough how important mammograms are and so forth, but you know, thank you again. It was, it was a great concert. We had a good crowd. Everything was peace and quiet. No, no problems with anything. Um, George helped us out with setting up and, and then breaking down and they had another event afterwards. So you reset everything the way everything needed to be done for that next event. Um, my husband is at rehearsal tonight, but he asked me to mention um, to you that he's aware that there is a plan for the infrastructure and that he's, we were both speaking, we were both talking tonight and I said to him, I said, well, I don't hear anybody complain about the buildings that were built on the north side of 5th and Main Street. Nobody complained about the buildings are being, that were built on the south side of 5th and Main. Nobody complained about the building that was being built for flames. And so nobody's, nobody complained about all these buildings. Why is everybody sudden, suddenly complaining about one simple building when the bank was falling apart and it was a danger? So now we're gonna have a better income with people coming in and it's gonna save on taxes. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? 
Yes, Mr. Graham. Uh, yeah, it's actually, uh, sorry that public works is in here tonight. Uh, I, I did see that uh, uh, Jim Graham report that. I gotta remember to do that. Uh, I, I did see uh, around Silver Lake that uh, herbicide was uh, was applied. Uh, they had cut the Phragmites and applied herbicide. Uh, actually, I, I had a question. Anybody know what type of herbicide that it was? Uh, it may have been a good idea, probably a good idea after uh, to cut the, the Phragmites first and then apply the herbicide. It seems to be effective uh, because it, it's already, uh, uh, most of the Phragmites has already turned brown. Uh, I don't think it's a long-term solution. It's probably gonna have Phragmites again next year. But uh, I, I just wanted to know, I just wanted to note that uh, Herbicide was a, was applied around the lake. Yeah, I know that's DPW, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I know they cut them all down. I didn't know that they were applied any of it, but uh, they, they should be here next meeting, so you could ask them what they used. Yeah, I, I just want to let you know. I, I also uh, today uh, was down by Silver Lake, and uh, uh, it was about twenty five, maybe. Uh, maybe 40 uh, loons on the lake. Uh, I've seen them there before, historically, but uh, this was the biggest flock that I've ever seen. Um, and uh, uh, their distinctive look is that they ride low in the water and uh, dive underwater and then come up you know, a couple yards away. Uh, and they're going back and forth, up and down the lake. Um, I know there's been concern over the years of the lack of, uh, of uh, aquatic vegetation in the, in the lake, but there must be something going on there now uh, because those, those loons would not be attracted to the lake. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else? All right, April. Can I have a motion to close the public session and adjourn the meeting? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you everybody for coming out. Have a great night.